Hey everybody, welcome back to Breakfast with Bob. We are at the we are at Challenge Daytona. We're brought to you by Toyota, the Daytona International Speedway, NASCAR Foundation, the YMCA, and the city of Daytona Beach. It's not often that we get to interview Lucy Charles Barkley with Reese Barkley. How are you both doing? Yeah, very good. Thanks, Bob. So since I got both of you together, I get to get the whole backstory. So <laughs> where did you guys meet? When did you meet? Were you both into swimming? What was the background? Uh, yeah, I was at university um, studying sports science and uh, was part of the swim squad um, at the university. And Lucy was also part of the swim squad there as well. So, so you were swimming together? Yeah, yeah, pretty much every morning, every evening. <laughs> right. And so were you both Olympic hopefuls for this? Were mainly... I know Lucy was freestyle and then open water. What was your specialty? Uh, I was more of a sprint-based uh, okay. athlete, so um, total other end of the spectrum to Lucy. In fact, we pretty much did all of our sessions at one end of the pool. I was at the sprint and she was at the other and end. And you were done distance. way earlier. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you were, and you were jealous. Yeah, I was like, that's way easier to be a sprinter. I've done this wrong. But. So how do, you, how do you meet a guy when he's at the other end of the pool? I don't understand. That's, that's a big pool. I think every now and again you want to see the distance set, didn't you? Yeah, just to, oh, just just to top up my own fitness. Just decide I'll go do a distance set just because I want to swim longer. No sprinter wants to swim longer. You had ulterior motives. We know that. That's great. And so then as you... Now, was this what? 2011? And 10, 11? Yeah, around, around 2010. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then you're, you're looking for the Olympics, and you were looking for Olympics at, what, 50, 100, that type of thing? Yeah, so I was um, obviously not quite the standard Lucy was. She was already on an international right. standard. I was national standard, trying okay. to get into international standard. Okay. Um, and what are your PRs? Uh, on the 50, I was about 22, <laughs> and then on the 100... <laughs> Uh, low 50 something right. think so yeah. yeah I never never broke under the 50 seconds um, for, for 100 but that's what I would have liked to have done so when Lucy was trying to make the team for freestyle and then for open water missed the open water by a spot yeah yeah that's always fun <laughs> um, and was looking for change and were you looking for that same change were you ready to move on from swimming um, well I was studying at the time and the the degree really ramped up in mm -hmm. the third year and I found it very difficult to maintain my swimming training and study a degree so right. my training had dropped off um, anyway n not because I wanted it to but just because I wasn't going to pass this uh, right. degree by doing swimming in the morning studying all day and swimming in the evening there just wasn't enough hours in the day to do it um, so by that point I was pretty fed up with swimming as well because right. um, I really wanted to get good results in my exams but swimming was kind of getting in the way a little yeah, bit yeah i got um, it and it wasn't going as well as it could have because i was studying so i wasn't committing the time to swimming as much right. as i wanted to so i was stretched in two directions basically and when now whose decision was it to do a triathlon well, we both, we were actually at the Great Scottish Swim and we both had had a bit of a break from swimming and we decided we'd go do this race. Yeah. And we raced so badly. We basically, <laughs> we went back to the hotel and we were like, yeah, this wasn't good. We need something else. And pretty much from then we signed up for an Ironman and we, we went down to all the other swimmers like, oh, we're doing an Ironman. So that's, yeah, we're doing that now. Like That's <laughs> our new sport. Yeah. We're done with all yeah. you people just looking at a black line. We're going to go do something where we have to... Get, we have to ride bikes and run, but we have no idea how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely no which, idea. Which was yeah. the first Ironman? Was that? Uh, we did UK, which was Bolton. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm imagining that's pretty balmy, nice and warm. And yeah, no, <laughs> Lovely it's, it's weather. Free, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that training for that experience, you got a guy with sports science background. So you, I'm guessing, created the training program. Yeah. So actually, um, my group of um, my, well, my my class was yes. doing a study for can they take a beginner uh someone who has no sport background at yeah. all yeah to do an ironman um and unfortunately <laughs> perfect is that? well it was perfect but they wouldn't let me do it because i have a sport background oh. so i felt a bit left out i was like oh well With I, no sport like none no sport whatsoever none whatsoever okay um so i really wanted to be part of that study and i couldn't be okay uh, so i I think now looking back at it, I kind of was like, well, I'm just going to do it myself then. Right. Um, and we were the, the subjects. You so basically, you were the guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, okay, we're going to study each other. Yeah. We're going to study this. Uh, so I was very fortunate that everyone was doing it everywhere um, in my class. So 
they were all studying it and I was part of that journey, although I couldn't be part of their study. I was learning from them too. Right. And we had all the lecturers in nutrition and physiology and everything to help us. So we kind of had a bump start into doing our first one, but we was very naive to the cost of uh, triathlon. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Bikes. I was on a student loan at the time. Yes. So I was eating, you know, like baked beans and stuff. So, <laughs> um, you make good baked beans on toast yeah, then. Yeah. You're good at that. Yeah. So yeah, the bi the biggest surprise when you go from just doing one sport to three, and, you, and all of a sudden you got to get bicycles, you got to get running shoes, you got to figure out how to, and it's a long day, right? Okay, even you're doing a 10K swim, yeah, that's that that might hours. be two hours, two gels, maybe. Yeah, two hours, two gels. <laughs> yeah. And now you're talking about something that's going to take, you know, probably for a beginner, nine, ten hours. Yeah, I think I was 12 hours. You were just under 12 for yeah. first. Yeah. yeah. So you so won. I went, I'd been going from, you know, my distance was 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> to 12 hours. <laughs> so I had a bit of a head start. You had a head start. <laughs> At least you knew what a gel was. Yeah. You had no idea what the hell that thing was. I like that. Yeah, that's great. So, what was the the biggest uh, what was the biggest hurdle for you when you were getting into this? Because I, I bet it was it was fun. Yeah. Because this is something brand new, and you're you're sort of outlining this program. Were you were you looking at what other people were doing, or were you sort of deciding, you know what, let's just try our own thing? Uh, a bit of both, really. I mean, the the program that we had sort of developed was a lot based on swimming so right. we relied so much on our swim fitness on that first one right the bike riding was just get through it i right. mean we were i had never really ridden a bike i got my tt bike about two weeks before the race <laughs> and I, I i left it in the little ring uh for the race and right. i was too scared to change it into the big ring in case i dropped my chain right and then you wouldn't know how to fix I it i didn't know how to fix it yeah. so um yeah it was literally just get to the finish line on the first one. I never thought I would do another one. I just wanted to finish it and be done. You were with the it. same way, right? Yeah. This is a one and done. It's like we're going to transition in our life. So let's do this triathlon thing, get it out of the way, and we'll find something else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the process of that, we were setting up our own business as well. Even while you were studying, we were oh. setting up being personal trainers. So we had Pulse Fitness personal training, which was our business. So we were both setting that up so we would have an income. But then this whole triathlon thing was far more expensive <laughs> than we thought. So yeah. um, we knew we needed to work a lot, train a lot. And actually, the, a lot of our biking was spin classes as well. It wasn't even out on the road just to get used to cycling. Just, just so what a, what a bike feels like. It was a steep learning curve wasn't yeah, it but yeah. it was fun but so that first race did you did you enjoy it yeah i think we both the the good thing was there was zero pressure it was like we no. just want to finish it doesn't yeah. matter how long we take so it was probably one of the most fun races we've ever done because there was just zero pressure and we were like right well i'll see you in 15 hours if that's yeah. as long yeah. as it see takes. each other all during the race and actually we lost each other at the yeah. start didn't we yeah. 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 <laughs> before the race I was like reese has gone right well i'll see you out there yeah. and then i think uh, did we see each other on the bike? No, I saw you on the run. Yeah, because yeah. it was a four-loop run, so yeah, we could see each, each other. other. So we're like, okay, we're both doing okay. We're both still alive, so it's good. So you finish a race, and you were thinking it's going to be a one-and-done, but obviously it hasn't been a one-and-done. What, what led to doing more races? I think we went to the awards, didn't we? And we... We learned that it was a kind of a bigger thing than we thought. Of. We learned what Kona was. We were like, oh, oh this. you had never heard of it. Yeah, we'd so. never heard of that. Not really anyway. And we didn't know that there was a process of qualifying as an age group. Who I thought it was more just a professional thing. So um, that was it. We were like, right, we're going to come back. We're going to qualify. We're going to do that next year. And it gave us a lot more focus, I think. We were like, actually, well, we did well, but we didn't do it as well as we could have. We just did it to finish. Actually, if we did it more focused and had a more structured training plan, then we actually yes. could maybe be quite good at this. So I think we were just hooked up after we'd um, recovered from yeah, how badly we felt after that. we realized we wanted to actually give it a proper go. Yeah. And when did you realize that, okay, um, Lucy could be really good at this? I'm going to be good, but yeah. there's somebody here who could potentially make a living doing this. To be honest, um, probably, well, the, the first year of which she won her age group in Kona, it was, yes. it was very obvious. But before then, she was consistently keeping up with... Uh, the triathlon club that we were part of um, right. and all of the men there. Right. She'd been doing some absolutely amazing park run times, which is a, a yes. local oh, 5K yeah. all run. All over the UK. Christy Wellington's very involved with that, yeah. And she was obviously, you know, phenomenal on the swim. So it was very early on that we sort of thought, well, do you know what, you could potentially be a professional at this. We didn't realise she would go from, you know, winning her age group to coming second in Kona in one, one year. One year, but, yeah. That changes things a little bit. Um, yeah, potential was humongous from the beginning. One of the hardest parts is we, you know, people come from a swimming background and you're just used to 
flogging yourself, getting in the water and just doing tons and tons of mileage. And when you try to transfer that to the bike, it works. But a lot of times people transfer it to the run and break down. Yeah. A lot of injuries, a lot of runner, a lot of swimmers get injured running. And yeah. uh, what I've always admired, when I look at your marathon splits over the years, there's little gains, right? Each year you're getting better and better and better, but not huge gains and injured, you know, which is always the worst. Was that something that you consciously looked at, knowing that runners tend to get injured? Um, it's very funny. Like, at the beginning, I would say we was quite reckless. Um, <laughs> we, we, we've done a lot of mistakes and learned from a lot of mistakes, but we've done them quite early on. So we would just, um, relative to our ability, yeah. we overdid it. And, and I say relative to our ability, I mean, we couldn't run 20K a week without that being too much for us. Right. Because we were so novice at running. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, we go to a running club and you've got people who we would be stronger and, and better runners than them. But, but they're running three, four times as much as us. Exactly. And we automatically would be thinking, oh, we need to do more then because that's the only way to get better. But at that time, uh, 20K a week was a lot for us. Exactly. Uh, but now over the years, obviously, we've um, got a lot more tolerant to higher, higher mileage. Right. Um, and now, yeah, we're very much aware of what we can and can't do. So, so, Lucy, for you, you go to Kona for the first time and get second. And I'm, I'm guessing you surprise yourself. <laughs> leaving like, where is everybody? I'm out here by myself. You, I'm sure you probably thought, okay, I'll, I'll be up there. But it's going to take, uh, somebody's going to catch me fairly early. You know, it took a long time for that. It was like the last 40K of the bike <laughs> before Daniela, you know, got you. Um, but go, when you came away from that first race, first Ironman, did you feel like, okay, I, I think I can win this one day? Yeah, there was a bit of that and there was a bit like, was that a fluke? Like, did right. that really yeah. happen? And like, even I remember when I decided to get my pro license and it was quite a process to get it before it was actually accepted to have the license on a trial basis. And kind of from that, I was like, oh, is this going to be too big a jump? Have I taken this too early? And then kind of how quickly we managed to turn it around and just managed to get that second place. I couldn't believe it really. Right. Um, and then there definitely was a sense, that, okay, yeah, again, maybe there's a lot of things we didn't do that we still can do and we can add that into our training and just be a lot more focused and maybe then I can win this race. Um, and I still keep thinking that maybe I can win this race. Yeah, there's um, no maybe, yeah. But I believe definitely we will win this race um, right. we're a great team and one day it's going to happen and hopefully it'll be sooner rather than later so knowing uh, a lot of people have they start with a coach and then they move on to the next it's sort of like there's different levels and the fact that you guys sort of learned this all together has that been helpful for you the fact that that reese is obviously looking out for your best interests but also that uh you've you've sort of learned it together yeah, I think that's the nice thing. We've learned it together. We've made the same mistakes together, but we kind of, we've learned from our mistakes very quickly and we did make tons of mistakes early on. Like but what? What type of mistakes? I think we just, maybe, yeah, like you said, we just overdone it and actually a lot of my injuries happened really early on. So we were like, okay, well, we're definitely going to make sure we don't do that again. So right. we just learned the hard way, but we did it when it didn't really matter too much. So now we just won't make silly mistakes again and I think the nice thing is we're always open to learning as well. Exactly. So we're always learning, which is nice. Reese, are you still racing? I am still racing. Yeah, I'm going to be racing this uh, on the ah. tomorrow evening. And, um, Trying yeah, to beat Lucy? I hope he so. He definitely <laughs> will. Really? Yeah. Oh, come on. I've been having off-season and eating cakes. Oh, so, and okay. Being a dog mum. playing with so. the dog. Yeah, playing with the dog. So and he's been training. <laughs> he's been he's doing got, a bit more training than me. He's checking off on the calendar. I've got this many days. I'm going to beat is, Lucy. This, this is payback because when I was in Kona, I was in my off-season. And uh, yes. Lucy was like, oh, can you come out and do my last long run with me and stuff? I was like, yeah, I'll come out. I'll come do that. No chance. Couldn't keep up with her at Couldn't all. keep up at all. No. No. All so, right. Payback. Too much, too much cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too much cake. Uh, how hard is it for you on race day over in Kona when you really can't do anything? Oh, do you know, I think it's, it's the hardest and most horriblest day of my life, but the most best rewarding day as well. Yes. Like, I am absolutely helpless to right. what, what's going on out there. I mean, you can yell. I can yell. Yeah, it's, it's a good job. <laughs> but, yeah, like, yeah. I know that you're always going to give it your all, but it's just the, the, the thought of something going wrong and how much time and effort you put into it. And right. You know, you can get a punch. I, I've been on the receiving end of that. I've right. had punches in Kona before. Sure. And it's nothing you can do. And no. I know, you know, it's, uh, you know, 
a relatively small problem to what else is going on in the world. But yeah. in our little bubble, that I'm could be. But it's the most important day of the year. And yes. so much of sponsorship, so much of everything you do yeah. is tied into that. Exactly, yeah. So I'm, I'm a nervous wreck on the day. I'm more nervous than Lucy is. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. for, it's a little bit of a relief you're able to get out there and, and do what you do. Yeah, I think. I mean, there was one year, I think it was 2016, where I was making the transition from age grouper to pro and Reese was racing in Kona and I was out there supporting. And honestly, I felt more wrecked that day than I have in <laughs> any other Ironman I've done. And I was like, I never want to be in that position no, again. It's, cause it's horrible. And I was like, I know how you feel, Reese, because I have been there. And yeah, I'm glad I'm out there racing and I just do my thing and I haven't got to worry about anything. So being so young and getting into the sport, the natural thought would have been, especially with your swimming background, is we'll go ITU, we'll go WTS, and you know, because you're gonna be, if I was the British Federation, I'd be like, okay, we know she's gonna be up there out of the water, we just need to work on bike run and she could be an Olympian. Did that ever enter your mind? Or was it, <laughs> I've already done the Olympic thing, I'd rather do something else? Um, yeah, it definitely entered my mind very early on, particularly training for that first Ironman. I'd kind of seen my 5K times come down yeah. at the park run and I did actually reach out to the British Federation and say, you know what, like, these are my times for swim and run and I'm kind of, what's the process right. if I wanted to do the Olympics? And it pretty much was, well, your swim is kind of good enough uh, <laughs> oh, you run you runs nowhere near and the bike well we just don't know so right. it's a no and it was like wow okay right, that well, made I'll a decision just, a lot easier yeah, i'll just carry on doing my ironman stuff then <laughs> that's pretty wild because see in the u.s they would have looked at your swim and run and said we can teach you to ride the bike because they taught gwen jorgensen couldn't ride a bike when yeah. she first started <laughs> in 2010 she was falling over at stoplights and trying to figure out how to clip in but that's you know they sort of find somebody with the with the engine and then yeah, it is a real shame, really. I mean, you, you was already in an Olympic cycle. You knew how exactly. the Olympic thing worked. And there was an opportunity there that I think was missed, unfortunately. For 2016, I think so, yeah. yeah, uh, made, yeah. That would have made perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, Short-sighted. But the nice thing is it got you into this early. The, the other side of it is sometimes people tend to do too many long-distance races. Yeah. And we've seen Pete Jacobs come in when he was 21. And by the time he was 30, I think he'd done 30 Ironman. You know, <laughs> and your body's gone. So keeping keeping that under control and not doing a lot of racing is, is that yeah, it's, hard? Yeah, it's difficult because I'm someone who loves to race. You love like, the race. I, I love to train, but I train to race. I love right. racing. It's, it's what yeah. motivates me. So it can be difficult, but we've, we've been smart. I think the first year I did way too many races, the first year I turned pro, and luckily I was okay. But then after that, you were like, okay, you don't need to race that much. You just right. need to do the key races and keep yourself healthy um, and enjoy those key races. Um, the level of women's sport has just risen so much that actually you can't race all the time because then no. you're just never going to race at the level needed to be at the top and for the men it's even more difficult so um yeah you have to be smart with how many races you do particularly in this long distance exactly now you have not been on this track before you rode today what, what did you think it was so cool wasn't it <laughs> really cool what like a just mind-boggling experience never thought I'd be here riding around this. I used to watch this on TV with my dad when I was Oh, a kid. so you were a NASCAR guy? Uh, yeah, or just you like racing? Yeah, I racing, but obviously NASCAR was something that was on telly every now and again in the UK. It's yeah. not televised as much, but I did used to watch it, and I used to play uh, video games with it as well. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah, it's just really... Did you, any background at all with this stuff? I did have, we had a really old, it was called a Dreamcast, that's a really old, like, PlayStation type thing. Yeah. And me and my sister did used to do some car racing on that. I don't know if it was NASCAR, it may well have been, and <laughs> my sister was really good at it and I'm really competitive but anything techie and that kind of thing she would always beat me so she always wanted to do it and I'd be a bit like mm, this is really where I'm going to lose at this so. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't really want to do it because yeah. I don't like that losing part <laughs> yeah that L is not something I'm, I'm, I'm into so end of the season this is sort of an interesting distance because you've got some Ironman folks you've got some uh, challenge folks you've got some Olympic people it's sort of a nice mixture of everybody racing. Yeah, I think it's going to be really fun. I mean, like I said, I've, I haven't really done a huge amount since Kona, so but I was sold on this unique course to come and do it a different distance. We've done a little bit of cross-country racing at home, um, so we've done a little bit of intensity. We've actually right. been out doing some group rides, which we don't often do. So, yeah, it was there was a big draw to come here and do right. this on this circuit and race under the floodlights at a different oh, time. So cool is that? To so go off cool. in the evening, right? Yeah, so, so cool. And we've got the Pro AM relay as well, so that's just a nice different thing to do so 
yeah, we were kind of sold on that. But um, yeah, I think we're just going to have great fun out there. And we're both going to be on the same track, so that's fun. That's always a good time. <laughs> and, and, but he'll be going to try to beat you. I think you might lap me. Uh, oh, I might lap you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Is, is, does your bike have cobwebs on it from Kona? <laughs> did, was it, did you just keep it in the box? From Actually, uh, she did. Yeah, uh, we had to uh, it in the <laughs> That bike hasn't been ridden. I've been in my cross bike all uh, winter. But. So you basically kept it in the box and brought it here. Yeah, pretty much. S- still got a little bit of... Uh, Sand on it. Yeah, yeah it's probably still <laughs> That is funny. As, uh, this next season, what, what, what are your plans? Or are you just haven't figured that out yet? Yeah, we're kind of, we're undecided at the moment. There's like an A, B and C plan. Uh-huh. Um, but the good thing is this time last year, we were getting married. So I had done zero training. So I know I'm already ahead of where I was last December, which is nice. Um, so yeah, this is a nice trip for our wedding anniversary as well. But yeah, we've got a few plans for racing next year. Um, some of us will probably do some of the same racing and then mm-hmm. Reese may do some slightly different ones. But oh, yeah. yeah. Announcement soon, I think. Very soon. Announcement yeah. soon. And now that you are a doggy owner, are you loving it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's kind of, it's such a silly thing. It's just only a tiny little dog, but she's definitely changed her life, I think. She's asserted herself very quickly. In basically, household, yeah. she, she's in I'm, charge. I'm basically. way down the pecking order now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you're not even third. You're no. like fifth or sixth. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm the dog, saying. it's a dog's toys, it's yeah. a dog's pillow. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> then, then, then Reese's. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, way back I mean, now. Christmas is coming and Lola's oh, got all the loads presents of presents. Are for dog. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's always so cool to catch up with you guys. You're always so much fun, and uh, it's, it's great to. I love the fact that you were, you know, as, as a guy with that background and training, that you've kept her running in control. Because I've I've seen it way too many times where people come in, they have great races. Next thing you know, they're oh, I'll just jump in and run a marathon and work on my running. And next thing you know, they're on the sideline. So yeah. it's been great. Yeah, I mean, like, we, do, we don't do ourselves a credit sometimes. Like, we do make a lot of mistakes, but we've also learned a lot of things from our previous background in sport, right. which we've applied to this. Um, so it's kind of like we've got a, a view outside the triathlon box a little bit. Which, Com- is, which is really important, yeah. right? Because a lot of times people are too immersed in just what other people in triathlon are doing. And you've yeah. got to look at what's outside there. Exactly, yeah. And I think it's worked pretty well so far so So far so good (laughs) you think (laughs) three seconds in a row in Kona and this last one man was was so cool because you you know you you, you're in you're in dog country or in two dog country leading (laughs) (laughs) then you go from two dogs to one dog to zero dogs in third and then it's like oh no Oh no, I need a dog because Reese has to be in fifth or sixth at home. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're back in second and back in dog country. Did you were you thinking along the dog side or had you forgotten all about that? Oh, I'd forgotten all about I, that. I, I mean, was guessing. She's thinking the dog stuff the whole time. Yeah. When she's going back and forth with Sarah Crawley and you're like I couldn't believe it. I mean I, I was out, I don't know, probably two miles from the finish. Yeah. And yeah. I just yelled as loud as I could. Obviously I didn't want to be like moving or anything to yeah. be seen to interfere. And then I thought, right. Last year, I got in so much trouble because I wasn't at the finish line. Right. Oh, what? Trouble. Yeah. You couldn't make it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, you couldn't get or there. They, or they didn't let you in. They, they, well, a bit of both. I sprinted yeah. down there. I couldn't get there in time. And then they wouldn't let me in. Um, this year, I had my pass and everything ready. Yes. I told them who I was. I'm going to be at the finish line. And I was two miles out. So now you got to run fast. But I got to run three miles because I got to go around the block to get. So I had to run down to the old where the swimming pool was. Yes. I got backpack on. I'm sprinting. I've literally got there just as Sarah Crowley finished. Oh, and I thought, ah, oh, Sarah Crowley's finished. Where's Lucy? Where's Lucy? Where's Lucy? And then I'm, I look out the corner of my eye. I'm like, Lucy's already on the carpet. How has this happened? And then so when you, last time you saw them, Sarah was leading. Yes, was it yeah, second? Yeah. Oh, so by so the time you didn't I, even see. It. I didn't even know. So he yeah. missed the pass. Yeah. yeah, he missed you digging deep. <laughs> one of the greatest <laughs> moments of your life. Yeah. I, I, I missed it all, yeah. You missed all of that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So, wait, and the year before, he wasn't there at all? Well, I think you were out on the Queen K, weren't you? But I you were so far, far down yeah. on the Queen K that yeah, there was there's no, no way, way you were making it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, so, when you get to the finish line, you're like, oh, Lucy, I ran so hard. Yeah. I, well, I'm worn out. Yeah. I don't know. What'd you do? What were you doing today? <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, she's normally confused. At how, how are you here? Where, like, I'm like in the middle of nowhere on the Queen K. Right. I literally, as soon as you start that run, I, I start walking along the Queen K as far, far as I can get. Because right. I know that's the point where... Well, yeah, yeah because there's nobody to, there. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, that, I always tell people, they come off the bike, you've had sensory deprivation for 112 miles, right? Yeah. <laughs> once, you're, once you go up Polani on the bike, you don't see anybody. Yeah. For, yeah. Maybe there's a, a couple of people who just happen to be out there. 
And then you come back into town, and now that first mile, there's thousands of people, and people run the fastest mile of their life <laughs> yeah, that yeah. first mile, right? Yeah. Uh, for one of our coaches, Jim Vance, uh, does the first mile split for all the pros. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And the first mile is usually people are running like 5'10", <laughs> and they're averaging 6'20 for the rest of the race. It's ridiculous. And they go out of their mind. And then it's also really nerve-wracking because... I'm there before the pro men start to come back. Yes. So I see all these pro men come in and they all look awful. And I'm yeah. thinking, oh no, how's Lucy's going to look? How's Lucy going to look? And then Joe Skipper comes through and he's always looking great and talking yes. and, like, yeah. and asking me questions. And I'm yeah. like, Joe, just run. And then Lucy always comes past and you always look the same. You always look stern faced. Yeah. Game face. Real smile. Yeah, game face. Oh yeah. Even, even. Dog face. She's <laughs> like, I've got, I want my two dogs. I'm going. <laughs> but this year, Sarah Crowley came past and she looked a bit you know, all, yeah, rough at right. that point, as you would do. We all looked rough you at think? that point. Yeah. And you looked rough as well, but not quite as rough. And uh, <laughs> that was my point of like, just go, just give it everything. You've got nothing to lose because I think Laura Phillip was six minutes back at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, even so if you, you know, blew yeah, up, yeah. you got nothing. So I didn't think, I honestly didn't think you'd be able to do it because yeah. you're so far. I know how rubbish you feel that. Yeah, that point two miles to go and you did it so yeah hats off to you that's, that's amazing that's a, that's a great line do you, you use that line when you proposed you look rough but, <laughs> but not as rough as Sarah Crowley <laughs> I'm going to be in big line. trouble after this that's interview that's a good line I like you got that me and Sarah going to beat you up now yeah. rough. You sorry Sarah <laughs> I like that on that <laughs> thanks you guys thanks Bob have fun out there tomorrow it's, thank uh, you it's really great to get you guys together and chat oh thank you very much and what's your doggy's name Lola Lola Lola, okay, and Lola is ruling the roost. Yeah, yeah, she's a good girl. Okay. She's learning a lot of tricks. So, yeah. <laughs> Again, this is Bob Babbitt. Hold on, we will be right back.